Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 14th of March and the week after Ignite. So it's actually been a, a pretty quiet week. Uh, a few little updates I want to cover, but overall, this should be pretty quick. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and then comment and share. So a couple of new videos this week. Obviously, if you didn't see it, watch last week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's about one hour. I covered all of the key infrastructure things from Ignite. I then created a video all about Project Biceps. So something I didn't actually talk about uh, in the overview last week because I know I couldn't do it justice. So this is the new language I can use to declaratively deploy resources to Azure. So today we might use ARM JSON templates, which is really not that friendly. Um, Bicep is actually designed to be coded. There's great tooling around it to declaratively deploy our resources to Azure. So if using ARM templates today, uh, probably want to go and switch to start using Bicep, which is now in its dot three version and is now supported for production purposes. And people commented on the thumbnail. Um, we hope there's never a project glutes um, or that would be a really sad thumbnail. And then I did a video on Azure unattended authentication from your scripts. I did kind of a getting started with Azure PowerShell and I went pretty quickly over the service principle managed identity authentication. And actually quite a few people said, hey, we're struggling with this. Could you go into that in a bit more detail? So that video is all about that. And also on Friday, I did a quick little mini motivational video um, all about being okay with discomfort. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, really just about how you think about kind of living life. So there were a few things I did not mention last week about Ignite, which I meant to. Um, just as you're going through an hour's worth of content, sometimes you, you miss certain things. So the first one was the Windows Admin Center is now in preview actually in the Azure portal. So Windows Admin Center is this great new experience for how I can interact and manage Windows Server operating systems. I can install this on my client machine. There's no agent required on the Windows servers and manage them just through kind of those remote protocols. Well, now it's actually in the Azure portal. So if I actually jump over super quick and we can actually take a look at this. Now you do have to enable it on the virtual machine. So if I go over here and look at my virtual machines, it means I've got my demo VM and you'll actually see down under settings, we have this kind of Windows Admin Center. Now in my case, I've actually led it up to the public IP address or I could use the private IP address. So if I have connectivity to its private IP, so I could be on the same VNet, a peered VNet, I'm on an express route, a site site VPN, as long as I can get to that IP address, then I don't need to use this public IP. Now I've got this locked down via an NSG, but generally I don't want to do a public IP if I can help it. So I have to enter my credentials for this. So this is kind of an account on that box. So I've already gone ahead and enabled the extension. And now what it will actually do is give me that Windows admin experience from the Azure portal itself. So here you'll see I can get overview information about that Windows Server OS inside. I could manage devices, I can see the file system, I could manage users and groups, I can open up in a PowerShell window, look at processes, registry, roles and features, all of these great capabilities are just now lit up directly from kind of the Azure portal itself. So again, there's a little extension you actually do deploy into the VM. It's kind of installing Windows Admin Center into that VM itself. It's gonna keep it updated for us. But now I can actually go and do that management inside um, actually directly from the Azure portal itself. I did not mean to click that button again. So one of the things is in preview, again, they're, they're kind of growing this uh, a nice capability. So go and take a look at that. Bicep 0.3.1 was released. And again, the big deal about this is it's now ARM parity in terms of its feature set, and it's now supported. So it's supported in production. I can go and call support and get help on that. 
And then Azure Security Center now actually has some built-in workbooks. So actually, again, if I jump over and we just super quick go ahead and look at Security Center. And what we can see on Security Center, remember, is we have these kind of workbooks. And if I go to workbooks, you'll see there's kind of um, three there. So we have this secure score over time, system updates, and vulnerability assessment findings. So basically, I can leverage these to actually go and get information about my environment through these workbooks and just use it to get that kind of better insight. I don't have much in this one, but you get the idea of what I can kind of do with these workbooks. So then other things that were actually new this week. So for Azure Functions, there's now a .NET 5 capability through a new isolated process model. So this actually creates a separate worker process outside the Azure Functions host runtime. So I can now get that .NET 5. Also, Node.js uh, 14 is available. And now I can actually have Python durable functions. So if you remember, the whole point about durable function is I can have this kind of long running stateful function. I have a workflow and then behind the scenes, there's state and checkpoints and restarts just done for me. This is very useful for maybe I have a whole series of functions I want to call in series, or maybe it's a fan out and I have a whole bunch of them run in parallel. Maybe there's some human user interaction. Whatever it is, there's some gap kind of in the primary function and things it does. So durable functions let me do that. So now I can use Python with that. Um, AKS, the resource live logs went GA. So once again, let's go and look at some of these. So if we jump back over, and if we go and look at one of our AKS clusters, look at my CNI. So this is really all around things like pods, deployments, replica sets. So I'm gonna go and look at my workloads. So I'm over here. And for my workloads, I can then go and let's say I look at pods, but realize I also have things like, well, the replica sets over here, um, I have my deployments. If I go to a pod and I'll pick my bad father web one. And notice here I have this live logs option. So if I select live logs, I will then select the particular instance. So I'll select the actual pod. And what it's now doing is live streaming things like standard out, standard error logs, events, metrics. I get the direct access to the data. Uh, with kubectl, I normally do like a logs-c or get events or top pods. It's going to give me all of that same information now through this live logs capability. So that is now GA as well. On the networking side, they announced routing preference has gone GA. I talked about this last week and I talked about it before. This is all around public IPs and storage accounts. Ordinarily, the traffic gets onto the Azure backbone as quick as possible and stays on it until the last moment. But I can kind of do a hot potato option where it stays on maybe my ISP's network for as long as possible. And likewise, on the return, Azure will offload it as quick as possible back to the ISP network. I'm generally, I'm, I'm trading that performant Azure network to maybe be more cost efficient. I, I save a bit of money when I do that ISP paste routing preference. So that is now GA, and I have a whole video going through hot, cold potato traffic. Then miscellaneous, um, really this Azure Resource Graph portal integration, and this is, I think, fantastic. You may remember the days, things like the AD Admin Center, it would have the GUI, and I could show kind of the PowerShell, and Windows Admin Center is kind of doing some of these things. Well, behind Azure is the Resource Manager, the Resource Graph. And it's super powerful that I can run these queries and sub-second across huge numbers of resources, I get the results. Well, now in the portal, I can actually see the query it's using. So if I jump back over to our portal, and I'll just kind of pick a particular resource. So if I go and look at, let's say, virtual machines. Now, you may have a little bar saying, hey, show preview experience. You want to click that. Because what you're looking for is this 
open query button. If I click that open query button, it's giving me the Azure Resource Graph query to show me the same data that was just shown in that portal. If I run it, hey look, there's my VM, resource group, location status. That's actually one of the kind of the new things we can actually do now. I can get from the extended properties the power state of the instance view. It, it's showing me how it's actually doing that. I can see the OS size. So I'll actually go and take this resource graph query. Maybe it's giving me some cool information on how I can do certain things that I might use for my own queries. I could go and look at my storage accounts. I could maybe actually go and pick a particular storage account or just go and look at open the query again. Hey, look, there's information about all my storage accounts. And look how quickly it returns. So this ability to now actually go and look at the query for kind of anything I am actually kind of looking at in the portal, so in the overview view, is super, super powerful to help me maybe create my own queries and just work out how I can get the information. So the resource graph, um, if you're not using it net yet, go and take a look. I'm gonna do a deep dive video on this in the next couple of weeks. Um, but this integration, I think, is phenomenal. It can really help us actually work out well, what, what is the right query to go and get that information. Um, PowerShell 7.1.3 release, so go and get that if you're not already using it, just general enhancements. And the AZ Predictor Preview 2 is now out. Now that actually relies on the 7.2, not this, the, the preview version of 7.2, this is all about the kind of suggestions for what I'm doing, rather than just being based on IntelliSense and maybe just basic commands I've done before. These actually use things like machine learning to work out, well, based on the context of what I'm doing, um, what are the commands you're likely wanting to do? So there's now this whole new second preview version of this that really builds and improves on the old version. But again, I'd have to have the 7.2 preview version of PowerShell 7. Uh, and that's it. I told you there's a fairly quiet week, but a few nice little things. I love the kind of that resource graph portal integration and some of those live metrics. But as always, I hope that was useful. And until next week, take care.